Today on our 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 1500, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the BMW Companion Custom Underbed Installation Kit for fifth wheel trailer hitches. Part number is BWGNRK 1057-5W. Now here's what our gooseneck is going to look like installed when we're not using it. As you can see, it's going to give us full access into the bed. Not really all that noticeable. We'll be able to move things in and out of here without any real kind of an issue. First thing we want to do is get our spare tire lowered down and out of the way. And we're also going to lower down our exhaust here just by pulling this hanger off. A little bit of spray lubricant usually helps. Now let's also separate the two that are just in front of our axle here. And it may be a good idea to support it with a safety strap there under the main muffler. Now we're going to come just in front of the rear axle here. We'll see a cross member. Let's clean the heat shield off right below that. We're going to trim it just across this line, which would be just behind the front edge. And we're going to go up to the next cross member up from there, and we're going to trim it just inside its edge as well. Now we can use some tin snips. Uh, we're going to use a, just a cutting wheel, and we'll get that cut out on both those lines, and we can remove that portion of the heat shield. Once that's cut on both sides, we'll just pull it out and set it aside. Now if we take a look in our instructions, it's going to give us a measurement. In this case, it's going to be from the back of our bed forward. And we just want to mark that out on our bed. If you have a spray-in bed liner, you need to account for that distance. That's going to be our front to back line. And now we need to center that between the two rails on the truck, so wherever we can find a good stop point. Then we'll need to take our four inch hole saw, center our bit right in the center of our hole, and go ahead and drill it out. Now, if your truck's equipped with the fender liners, it's time to pull those out. We're gonna have 13 screws that hold them in place using a T15 bit. Now, if we pull each edge out, kind of around to the corner there, and then pull down on the middle section. Should just kind of slide out for us, you see there. Then we can go over to the driver's side and we'll do that exact same thing. Now here on the passenger side wheel well, we want to come from the hat channel there, the cross member, and measure forward six and a half inches and make a mark. Be right there. Then we want to measure out a half inch on each side of it. Should be there and there. Then we're going to measure up one half of an inch. Should be there. Then we'll make our lines. And we need to get rid of that small area right there. Now we can take our rear cross member. We want the notched area to be toward our driver's side. We also want our holes to be oriented towards the back of the truck. And we'll just begin to slide that right in our slot there. Just like that. 
Now, once we get it in there a ways, we'll go underneath and kind of help guide it over the other side of the frame rail. Now, just kind of guide those over. You can see here the brake lines, the electric uh, loom that, or wiring loom that runs up through there. We want to go up and over those. And we'll just push that forward. Now, this hole right here is the one we need to get our bolt started in beforehand or we'll never get our hand in there to do it later. So we'll bring our bolt right up through. Use the provided O-ring. Just pull that right around. Now I'll just move that up forward. I want it to be three or four inches in front of our hole there. Now we'll get our rear bar installed. Same thing's going to apply here. We'll probably have to help it out. Just allow it to rest there and help it out to go the rest of the way. The holes are going to be offset to one side. We'll get it in there and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees to stand it upright. We want those holes to be down or toward the bottom. This is where an adjustable wrench can come in handy. Help get a hold of it and rotate it into position. Then we'll want that just pretty much right back up against the, the cross channel there. Now we'll grab our center section here. We want the round part on the top to be toward the rear. And we'll also have our locking handle toward the driver's side. We just need to get this up in place. We want to get it on the bolt that we had up there with the U-bolt. That's going to go in our outer hole right here. And then we'll have our series of bolts just to get it nice and secure. So the bolt that we've got held in with the O-ring will go here. And we just want to start a couple of our bolts here to hold it in place. And we'll just continue getting our bolts in place until we have the three in the front, which will be a bolt coming through with a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. And then we'll have four in the rear. One, two, three, four. That's going to be a bolt with the flat washer and lock washer. Now we'll take just a quick look. We want to make sure that our the gooseneck opening itself is coming out just perfectly within of that, that four inch circle that we've created. And it looks really good. Everything's centered up. So we can continue on with the install. Now here on the driver's side, we're going to look just behind our main rear crossbar here. In the frame, we're going to see a oval shaped hole. We're going to take one of our carriage bolts, one of the spacer blocks. We're going to place that through it just like that. And now we need to work that into that hole so it sits like that, poking out. That flange is going to be on that back side. Next, we're going to take our frame bushing. That slides over our bolt, and then that should be centered right into that oval-shaped hole. Next, we've got our, our keeper, retainer clip, whatever you want to call it. We need to thread that over. And we'll tighten that down so that holds that nice and secure. And then right over that, we're going to place a flat washer. And we'll go do the exact same thing for our passenger side. Now, we'll grab our side plate. Uh, we want the longer edge to be toward the rear of the truck, just for reference. We'll place that right over our stud. Place on a flat washer, then a lock washer, and then our hex nut. Just hand tight on that for now. And then we just want to maneuver our side plate right up into position there. Make sure we don't have any kind of interference or anything. Now for our rearmost hole location, we're going to use one of our half inch bolts, flat washer and lock washer. And we'll bring one of our bolts back through the front, through the side plate, and then a lock washer and a hex nut. Now we can head over to our passenger side and we'll repeat that same process. 
Now we're going to slide our side plate into position. We want the hole on that plate to be at the bottom. That little recess cutout is going to be for our brake lines at the top. We're going to slide it. We've got a vent tube here. Let me get that down out of the way. As we do this, we want to be careful not to do any damage to the brake lines themselves. Rotate it a little bit. There's going to be a keeper right here for the wire loom. You can see it's interfering there, so just pop that out. That'll give us a little bit more slack in that line. Now to each side of our clamp, we're going to add a lock washer, one of our hex nuts. Then we'll head over to the passenger side and do that same thing. Now let's go through, we'll snug down the hardware in our center section and then get it torqued to specification. Now we're going to tighten down the clamps here on the side bracket. We want to alternate top to bottom, tighten them down evenly to the foot pounds that we've got listed in our instructions. And we'll go do the same thing for our other side. Now with those secure, it's time to tighten down the two bolts that are securing the cross members to the side plates. Now we can go over to the other side and repeat the same process for there. Now we're going to take our release handle, we're going to slide it in from the driver's side all the way over into that middle section, then we can head underneath and secure it. You can see our handle is going to fit through the small semicircle slot right here. It's going to come right behind the latch. We're going to bring our carriage bolt through there, then on the back side we'll thread on our flange nut. This is a locking flange nut, so once we have it secure, it'll hold its position. Now we want this to be nice and secure, but we just want to take the play out of our handle. We don't want to tighten it down so much that we deform it. Now we can pull out when we want to pull our pin out so we can slide our ball in and out. And then we'll just rotate our handle counterclockwise and that'll release it. Now we can grab our half inch drill bit. We'll come underneath here to our center section. We'll come over to the first set of holes and we're going to drill our half inch hole through both of those. We'll do that on each side. Now let's clean up our holes a little bit here. Just want to provide a good area for our connection points to slide up and down in. With those cleaned up, we'll take our U-bolts, drop them down through, make sure they move up and down freely. Now we'll head to the underside and get them secured. Now onto each one of the threaded portions coming down from the U-bolt, we're going to place a spring on, and then also one of the nylon hex nuts, then also one of our crimp lock nuts, and then we'll tighten it down to where our U-bolt is flush with the bottom. Just like that, and we'll do the same thing for our driver's side here. Now we're going to hang our exhaust back up. We'll spray lubricant can help out with that job again. You see it'll just slide right on there. We'll take care of the ones up front as well. Alright, with that back up, re-secure and we'll remove our safety strap. Now we'll put our inner fender back in if your vehicle was equipped with it. It's basically the opposite of removing it, get everything kind of lined up. 
tuck it in behind the fender all the way around. Then we'll grab our fasteners and start putting them back into position. Remember we had 13 of them, so just get them all put back. Now here on the driver's side fender well, we're going to have to make a modification. So what we'll do is line up a couple of our holes here. We're going to get it as close to po as possible. Then we'll locate our handle, pinpoint the top of it there. We just want to mark out a small area that we're going to take out. That'll allow for handle operation. And the rest of it should just be able to flex out. That should be all we really need to trim. Let's just pull it out from the vehicle a little bit and use our razor blade. All right, now we can get our spare tire put back up. And with our spare tire back in place, that's going to complete today's installation of the BMW Companion Custom Underbed Installation Kit for the fifth wheel trailer hitches. Part number BW. GNRK 1057-5W.